great pleasure that I welcome you today to today's meeting of the, of the Maritime Single Window. This initiative is set to revolutionize the way we manage and operate our marine activities. This week will mark a significant milestone in our collective journey towards greater efficiency, transparency, and collaboration in the maritime sector. The Maritime Single Window is not just a technological advancement, it's a symbol of our commitment to modernize maritime processes, enhance regional trade, and further collaboration. By streamlining, and by streamlining the submission and exchange of information between ships and ports, this platform promises to reduce administrative burdens, improve data accuracy, and accelerate the flow of goods. In doing so, it supports our shared goals of sustainability and economic growth. We have the unique opportunity to explore the transformative potential of this system as we hear from technical experts. Their contributions will illuminate a path, will illuminate the path forward, highlighting best practices and innovative solutions. I encourage each one of you today to actively participate in a series of discussions, workshops we'll have, not just today, but throughout the week, to share your perspective and reinforce partnerships. Let us leverage this platform to shape a more efficient and resilient industry for generations to come. I want to thank you for being here this morning, and I hope that we all look forward to a very fruitful session. Um, just uh, again a quick remark in terms of um, the, the old genesis of where we are today. Um, I can recall four years ago, we actually met um, in St. Lucia, um, the OECS and other partners to chat the way forward. So that's a journey which is culminating today after four years. And St. Lucia could be the first um, in many of the um, other OECS countries um, to actually um, get the expertise that's at the head table. So once we got that opportunity in terms of starting that discussion, P.S. Um, Ms. Lenita Joseph said, no, Alexander, we have to go for it. Let's make it happen. So again, having said that, again, I want to acknowledge the advocacy of the um, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, um, Port Services, uh, Ms. Lenita Joseph. And having made that, um, that introduction, I will call on um, P.S. Uh, Ms. Lenita Joseph to make um, the introductory remarks. Again, P.S., thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Good morning, everyone. This was not a very difficult decision to make because I completely understand and appreciate the value of what we're doing. So when we sat in on the meeting with the OECS and St. Lucia was at the top of the list, 5th of August, it was not a matter of if, I know it was a very short timeline, Mr. James, but there was absolutely no question about whether or not we'd do it. We would turn some of us if we needed to just to get it done. So I'm happy that we are here today. It is a privilege to address you today on a topic of paramount importance to our national and global maritime activities, the maritime single window. This week's engagement is completely aligned with commitments made by the government of St. Lucia through the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport at CARICOM level in support of the establishment of a maritime single window. It represents a strategic and transformative shift in how we ma manage maritime logistics, streamline regulatory processes, and enhance the overall efficiency of our shipping industry. The International Maritime Organization, through the Facilitation Convention, better known as the FAL Convention, lays the groundwork for a single channel connecting ships to the various authorities that safeguard our borders. The Maritime Single Window is a system designed to streamline the information exchange between maritime stakeholders, including the Port Authority, shipping agencies, Customs and Excise, and the Department of Immigration, Port Health, and other relevant parties. The core objective of the MSW is to simplify the administrative procedures associated with maritime trade by creating a single entry point for all required documentation and data submissions. In essence, 
the MSW serves as a digital hub where all necessary information can be transmitted electronically, reducing the need for multiple submissions to different agencies and minimizing the occasions for delay, errors, and duplication. It supports the broader goals of enhancing trade efficiency, improving regulatory compliance, and fostering international cooperation. The global maritime industry is an intricate web of operations involving numerous stakeholders. Historically, managing the vast amount of inf documentation required for maritime trade has been a tedious process. Ship operators, agents, customs officials, port authorities, and other entities often find themselves grappling with multiple systems and overlapping requirements. This fragmentation leads to inefficiencies, delays, and increased operational costs to all parties. The MSW addresses these challenges by consolidating information into a unified platform. By doing so, it significantly reduces the administrative burden on all parties involved. For example, the shipping companies can submit their cargo declarations, port arrival notices, state status of health declarations, and other necessary documents through a single interface rather than repeating the process multiple times. Moreover, the MSW enhances regulatory compliance by ensuring all required information is submitted in a standardized format. This reduces the likelihood of errors and omissions that can lead to costly fines or delays. By streamlining these processes, we not only improve the efficiency of maritime operations, but also enhance the predictability and reli reliability of our trade networks. A well-established maritime single window yields cross-sectional benefits to all engaged parties. These benefits to the micro and macroeconomics of the state through the boost in efficiency, cost reduction, and transparency across the board. Efficiency gained. By centralizing information submission, the MSW reduces the time and effort required to process maritime transactions. This leads to faster turnaround times for ships in port, which translates into cost savings for shipping companies and a more efficient flow of goods. Cost reductions. The reduction in paperwork and administrative overhead results in lower operational costs for all stakeholders. It minimizes the need for manual data entry and reduces the risk of data duplication. Improved transparency. A single window system provides greater visibility into maritime operations. This transparency benefits all stakeholders by providing real-time access to critical information, facilitating better decision-making and coordination. International <coughs> trade facilitation. As more countries adopt maritime single windows, it fosters greater international harmonization and interoperability. This alignment with global standards simplifies cross-border trade and enhances the efficiency of international shipping networks. An environmental impact it contributes to environmental sustainability by reducing paper use and enabling more efficient port operations. While the benefits of the maritime single window are substantial, the implementation process is not without its challenges. Transitioning from traditional systems to a unified digital platform requires careful planning and coordination. We must find smart and innovative means to solve potential issues, such as integration with existing systems, data security, training, and capacity building. So I'm holding your feet to the fire, and I'm addressing the head table right now. <laughs> I'm holding your feet to the fire this week to ensure we overcome these challenges in favor of the significant gains of the MSW. It is imperative that we remain adaptable and open to innovations that can further enhance the capabilities of our daily operations. Ongoing collaboration with regional counterparts with support from the OECS Commission and technology providers will be key to pro overcoming challenges and achieving a seamless integration of the system. Throughout this week, let us zero in on the persistent challenges with our current way of doing business with a view to transforming them into opportunities to strengthen our local and regional maritime industry. 
support international trade and contribute to the overall economic prosperity of our nation. And based on what has transpired over the last few days, all eyes are on the region. And I think we need to bear in mind that other nations will want to do business with the Caribbean as a result. So it's even more important now that we get our act together as it relates to facilitating international trade. So I want to welcome you to our sessions this week. Please feel free, whatever you need, the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport, together with SLASPA, we have collaborated very firmly to ensure that this process is successfully completed. So I want to welcome you and thank you for the opportunity to present to you this morning. Thank you and have a good day. It's a pleasure for me to be here in St. Lucia this morning to deliver these few brief remarks at this um, opening session of this five-day um, five long country visit and assessments that we are undertaking in all of the member states with regards to the establishment of a maritime single window system to comply with the International Maritime Organization's FAO Convention. Um, we will hear presentations later today that will expand on, on what is the FAO Convention and an MSW. Now, I am from the OECS Commission, and which is headquartered there, so you are very familiar with um, our work. But one of the key um, functions of the organizations of the organization is to promote cooperation among the member states and at the regional level and international level having due regard to the revised treaty of um, Chagaramas and other and the Charter of the United Nations. The Commission also works to assist member states in the realization of their obligations and responsibilities to the international community with due regard to the role of international law as a standard in the conduct of their relationships. Um, one of the key objectives, of course, is the establishment of an economic union as a single economic and financial space. In achieving the purpose of the organization, the member states have committed to uh, implement decisions of the organization, as well as to endeavor to coordinate harmonize and undertake joint actions and to pursue joint policies in a number of areas including international trade agreements and other external economic relations, external transportation and communications including civil aviation, and of course the economic integration of the member states through the economic union protocol. I say all this really to set the context of why we are there, why we are here, and why the OECS Commission is very much pleased to be participating in this endeavor, particularly in partnership with the IMO, and as well with support, technical support that we are receiving from one of our own member states, Antigua and Barbuda, um, to assist the, the other member states in implementing the maritime, maritime single window system. The Permanent Secretary outlined to some degree um, what an S M MSW is, what are the benef expected benefits of having an MSW? So I will not get into detail on that. But we are here this week really to um, assess the state of play, to assess the legislative, regulatory, and institutional framework for the clearance of ships in St. Lucia. Uh, and out of this, we are going to develop a implementation plan, a project proposal um, where for the implementation of an MSW in St. Lucia. We will also be doing this as well in four other member states. Antigua and Barbuda has already implemented the MSW, and again, we will receive a, pro a presentation on their experience in that regard. Of course, the PS also mentioned the importance of having an MSW. It really talks about making the procedure for clearing of ships as smooth and as seamless as possible. In the OECS, within the context of the economic union, we are all working towards harmonization we are all working towards having common approaches. We are all working towards having a seamless um, frameworks, both legislative, regulatory, and institutional, for conducting business um, within the region. And I think it's very important that we keep that in mind because the goal and the vision we have for the establishment of the MSW in the OECS 
is that all of the member states will have similar processes so that when ships come in to clear um, in the member states, they don't have different approaches and different systems in all of the member states. So it is a pleasure for the Commission to be here this morning. Um, we also want to thank the IMO for their support um, in collaborating with us in this endeavor and to also as well CARICOM impacts um, because we are going to use the advanced, um, the enhanced advanced passenger information system as a platform through which the um, ships would be submitting the required information and documents um, to comply with the FAR convention. So even at the wider regional level there is hope that at the CARICOM level we could create a region-wide um, framework for ship clearance using um, similar processes. So over the next five days we look forward to um, very fruitful engagement with all of the key stakeholders. Today we are starting with a, a group workshop where we will outline um, the procedures, we'll outline the framework, we'll outline the project and over the next three days we'll be meeting with the individual um, key stakeholders to get a clear understanding of what um, takes place in St. Lucia so that we can determine where the gaps are, what um, needs to be done and what resources will need to be mobilized to support the implementation of the NSW. So I just want to thank you and wish us a good next five days. Thank you. Uh, you know, in uh, January 2024, uh, member states were ambitious and they uh, decided to uh, make uh, obligatory the establishment of maritime single window in all the ports of the world. Since January this year, all the ports have to establish, have, ha, have to have uh, a, a maritime single window. This is a clear uh, decision of the member states uh, towards the acceleration, uh, acceleration of digitalization in uh, the maritime transport. Uh, Antigua and Barbuda made a, a great work in 2019 when they uh, completed the implementation of a maritime single window. The initiative was from Norway, who generously offered their expertise uh, to implement a basic generic maritime single window, and the country selected was Antigua and Barbuda, and this was an excel excellent decision because the work made uh, by Norway and Antigua and Barbuda was completely successful, and uh, they are running now a, ma a maritime single window. M Antigua and Barbuda, has decided to go a step ahead and uh, ha uh, has been working to integrate uh, its maritime single window in the GFCC with the idea to establish uh, a regional depository or uh, repository of uh, information uh, from ships and cargo. This is a significant step ahead that is going, is being made by Antigua uh, and Barbuda. Uh, based on these decisions and with the generous uh, offer of Antigua and Barbuda to provide its expertise and with the leadership of uh, uh, the OECS Secretariat, uh, the Commission, sorry, we, uh, IMO has decided to launch uh, a project to assist uh, the five OECS uh, member states to implement a maritime single window uh, in your countries. The first uh, mission is this one, uh, is in San Lu Lucia. And in the coming months, we will visit the other four states. Uh, and the idea is to com uh, complete uh, the uh, visits in November this year. Um, the idea is, as I said, to assist you to implement a maritime single window, but in addition to connect the different maritime single window through the GRCC. This is an ambitious project because it is with the idea to create a regional system to exchange information. This is a significant a step ahead if we compare with other regions that they are, uh, most of member states are focused on implementing the um, maritime single window in their ports at national level, but there are not really many initiatives on regional uh, 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 projection. Therefore, um, this is an um, ambitious project 
In Ayamo, we are really very uh, um, keen and we expect a successful implementation of uh, the single uh, window in your countries. The idea of uh, the, the aim of this uh, uh, visit is to understand what is the current situation, your legislation, and at the end of the day, we can prepare uh, like a um, uh, identification of the needs you have with identification of hardware and software that you may have and uh, take into account the limited resources of IAMO, we would approach possible donors, other member states, to present the outcome of uh, the visit uh, to the five OCS countries. Therefore, really, in uh, IAMO Secretariat, we are really uh, mm, mm, very ambitious with this project and with the leadership of the OECS Commission and the generosity of the Antiguan Barbuda uh, administration, I hope that uh, we will be successful. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. We will have today the opportunity to see different presentations, and uh, I hope that it will be of your interest. But uh, I'm really eager to work with you for the next days. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. My task is very simple, having listened to all the previous speakers who have um, address the benefits to begin. I will not spend any time going over that. As, again, I have a lot of presentations lined up, so I'll save my voice for them. But I just want to be able to introduce the Antiguan team, myself from the Department of Marine Services at Antigua, which is a maritime Thank administration. You. I basically perform Christopher Alexander job in Antigua. And um, I'm the project lead, and I've been the project lead since its, since its inception in 2018, when we finally got going. Part of the Antiguan team is Mr. Jason Roberts, um, a senior manager at the Port Authority. He is a system administrator, and he is going to help us navigate through uh, the single window system from an operational perspective. And then we have Mr. Kendall Brown, who used to be at the Customs Department. He's a, uh, a known Asikuda man who helped to develop the Asikuda system, who came on board and has helped us to develop the generic maritime single window system and also to adapt it and bespoke it for Antigua and Barbuda. And we're very, very excited about the prospects of presenting this to St. Lucia because there's a lot of similarity. Just looking at the questionnaire that was filled out, there's a lot of similarity in the way in which we do business in terms of clearance of ships. So we think it's, it's, it's almost ready for you. I think with 95% or 99% ready in terms of what, what um, you can do in terms of accepting this. The beauty about this is that you will be able to get this software immediately, if you so desire, and start working it. But I think Julian has um, indicated that there's a, um, a system in place that we will do a gap analysis during this week to see where you are and where you ought to be based on our experience. And we're gonna share that experience to see what national framework you need to put in place in order for us to put together an implementation plan and take this project for funding to another agency. If you have the money already, if Port Authority has the money and ready to sign the check to implement it even better, um, you can implement it in a lot, um, in a lot of quicker pace. Since the inception of this project, we have always had in mind bringing this to our fellow OECS member states. When we were selected back in 27, and this is part of the reason why I encourage you, and I talk to Christopher all the time, you need not go to one IMO meeting. You need to attend all the major IMO meeting as a, as a, as a maritime administration, as a port authority, because that is where you learn about things that are developing, things that are in gestation, new rules, new regulations coming so you can preempt and put things in place. We were there and we were able to get this project um, as a small island developing state, thanks to Mr. Brill, um, the good working relationship we have, and we give him um, thanks and credit to bringing this to Antique and Barbuda. Um, but uh, since the inception, we wanted to bring this to other OECS member states, CARICOM in particular, but, um, sorry, CARICOM in general, OECS in particular, because of the treaty organization and the similarities that we have. We had some delays, um, primarily due to COVID. We can always blame it on COVID, but I can tell you, this man has been a thorn in my skin 
I would have used another language in another forum, but this man has been a thorn in my skin in order to bring this thing to maturity so that St. Lucia can benefit. And he represents you well in terms of making sure that um, we can um, bring this system and set it out for everybody. So today I have the honor and privilege to present to you a mature system. Um, so we took advantage of the time delay and um, working with our consultant, IT, I think we have even done more to bring it to a level of perfection, which you're going to, I guarantee you're going to be very impressed with. It simply means that you need to be around for the rest of the day. And I implore you that for the rest of the week when you are slated to come in, what we hope to do is to give you a general presentation and walk you through the system today, demonstrate that physically. But the rest of the days when we do the bilateral, the one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to role play. We're going to give each agency that comes in, customs, immigration, the shipping agents, when you come in, we're going to give you hands-on experience in entering the system through the entire process. So please, I implore you to make the effort to come in when we're doing the bilateral, because that's the only way we can drill down into making sure that all your concerns about this system is recorded, taken on board, and analyzed as to how we can um, fix it. So at this stage, I'd just like to thank uh, Mr. Brill for the IMO's commitment to developing this system and bringing it to this level of maturity and taking time out of his busy schedule to be here in St. Lucia for the very first one. i also like to express my appreciation to Mr. Ricardo James. Um, when he looked through the lens of trade and saw the benefits of the single window system, he was on board from day one and he's still on board and he's helping to lead the charge with respect to bringing this out in the OECS. Um, I also like to thank the GRCC when we had a pushback from the cruise ships, which I'll mention um, later on. When we have a pushback from the cruise ships in terms of the duplication, because they saw sending the APIS to a GRCC a duplication for what we are requiring for this single window for clearing ships, they decided, oh, 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 back up, this is too much work. And we approached GRCC and they were willing to modify the APIS system to accommodate the, um, all the file forms, all the documents that are required. So you'll hear a little bit more about that where they are now in terms of the, that integration as well. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to um, thank the PS. She is very, very, um, what shall I say, don't like to take credit, even though she delegates some of these responsible. PS, please accept our gratitude for the warm hospitality so far. Sometimes I slip in a little Jamaica. You notice that? Yep. My apologies. A little Jamaican patok sometimes <laughs> creep up. But um, my sincere um, gratitude with respect to the transportation and the hospitality thus far, um, and your willingness to accept uh, this visit at relatively short notice. It speaks volumes about you and your leadership. Thank you very much.